Alrighty, guys. Performers and brothers here again with another. With, look, my guest. We're in the lab right now. We're in the lab. Uh, we're, we're having a, uh, another conversation with an uh, Olympic weightlifter, not a bodybuilder, Olympic weightlifter. So there's a difference. So welcome, my guest Ali. He's been on the show before. He was here a while back, and a lot of people were interested in what we what he had to say. So we brought him back for a another another interesting conversation about Olympic weightlifting. And uh, and how difficult it is, and more streamers than uh, than what bodybuilding than anything. The end, yeah, because you use a full 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 body, full body, full range of motion, everything. So bodybuilding, you do one contraction, you work the bicep, what you doing here, boom, boom, boom. But he has to work bicep, tricep, back shoulder. I mean the whole anatomy, and it has that only technical aspect with a lot of heavy weight. So welcome, my guest Ali. We're in the lab. So, you got it? Yeah, th thank you for the introduction. Uh, as Eugene said, my name is Ali. I uh, go as the Ali Ali on Instagram. And I am a weightlifter, a sport of weightlifting called Olympic weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Because it's the only barbell sport in the Olympics yeah. right now, right? Uh, we don't know if we're going to get kicked out. Or... <laughs> Why is that? Because uh, of politics, really. Really? Yeah, so weight weightlifting is an international sport. Uh -huh. Right, like powerlifting, you don't really have nations competing. No, you don't. In weightlifting, you have like the country of Uzbekistan or Turkey, Germany going against the U.S. Mm -hmm. So when when you have that sport on an international level, it falls under the um, International Olympic Committee. Okay. And they're the ones with the money. Oh, um, do you want to pay for that? It's like a like a non-profit organization. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's an organization, uh -huh. and it's a top-down, right? Okay. So the organization will give, for example, USA track and field some money. Uh -huh. It will give like oh. the Iranian weightlifting some money. Like that, they know that. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, the weightlifting federation is called the International Weightlifting Federation. Mm -hmm. So you have the Olympic Federation, you have the International Weightlifting Federation. So they give their money down, and then the International Weightlifting Federation spreads their money to different countries. Okay. So. For the U.S., like we have a giant economy. Mm -hmm. The money that we get from the International Weightlifting Federation isn't much. But let's say you are um, a small country, like Cameroon in Africa, right? uh -huh. okay. uh, or um, let's say a, a Middle Eastern country that's small like Qatar, mm -hmm. and you're getting this huge sum of money for weightlifting, right? Okay. So it gives you a chance to like take organization money and put it in your own pocket. All corruption. Yeah. Wait, wait, you think it's a cheap sport, right? You just said, look, we're in Ali's lab. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have money, but weightlifting is so cheap compared to other sports. Anyone can really do it. But, but, but the cost effective behind it, if you get injured, injury, injury is a lot more expensive. Shoulder rotation out of play, because when you, in the bar of your head, rotation, advice, and sure, strikes, sure. you have, your injuries cost more than. Well, well compared to like baseball. Okay. You want to have baseball, first you need a baseball stadium. Okay. You need the field. The field needs to have maintenance, mm -hmm. right? Then you need to have stands. Um, you know, you need a giant facility. Weight the thing? Mm -hmm. This is all you need. Yeah. You Keep need a separate. platform, a barbell, and some weights. Yeah. And a mice, and a mice, and a, and a drive to go ahead and do the work. And, and, he, and here's the, the key difference. You want to be good at baseball, you need to go practice with better baseball players. Okay. You want to be good at weightlifting, you can do it on your own. Right? You don't need no one else, right? You don't need a, you don't need a special league, right? Because, look, there's, there's videos on the internet of um, these African guys, right? With uh, busted barbells and some... Oh, yeah, they throw stuff together yeah, and, 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 and they, they have good technique yeah. and, and they're lifting some good stuff. You know uh -huh. They're doing weightlifting. And they go internationally and compete in the top. Okay. Like, with American football or baseball, you can't do that. You're going to need... You, you need a team. Yeah, you need but a team. But you can practice, you can, you can practice the skill set. The technique of... Foot, you said, what, football or football, Mary? Both, both. Okay, you practice your you practice your technique, you know. Sure, sure, yeah. You know, you, you can get better on your own, right? Okay. But when you want to talk about world level, uh -huh. that becomes a little bit different. So okay. at the world level, weightlifting is easier, right? I got you. So world level team sports become harder and harder. I got you. Okay, okay. Well, I, okay, I, I can understand you correct because <coughs> because excuse me because you're working. With just you and you are against you. Yeah, the team is small. It's just you and the coach, and you have a one-time payment. You get your platform, get you some weight different shoes, buy uh -huh. some weights, and that lasts for ten years. So, and that's why a lot of countries 
pay their weightlifters a salary just to be a weightlifter. Because, like, like I said, bodybuilding in a certain country, they get paid. And right now, there's a guy from Iran or Turkey? Uh, yeah, yeah, Iran. Iran has one. Hadi Chupan, I think is his name. Oh, talk about the, 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 the Olympic weightlifter. weightlifter. Oh, there's... <coughs> well, you said big dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's from Georgia. Georgia. Jordan? Georgia. Georgia is a Middle Eastern country. It's a European, East European country. Georgia or Jordan? Georgia. Are you going to have a country? Oh. Yeah. I'll make it a little bit. Well, they're, they're like, see? It goes back to the point. Small countries uh, that are, like, let's say, not significant on the international stage uh, are so darn good at weight of thing. Because that's all they have. they got to put their country yeah. on the map. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know... The um, money and weightlifting thing is kind of like a paradox, uh -huh. because in individual sports, um, it's a little bit different. Can, okay. I, can I explain that? Yeah, yeah okay. So, there was a um, shot put and discus throwers. Sure. Germany was like ruling the world for like the last... Shot put, yeah. shot put, and discus. Shot put, javelin, and discus, and these are like individual sports, kind of mm -hmm. like weightlifting where the athlete just performs a single movement okay. and gets rated on the objective. Mm -hmm. you, know, so you get a number. Discus and everything else? Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Germany decided to sponsor these athletes. So what they did is they helped you go to a school that's an academy where you can train. Mm -hmm. And then when you graduate, they'll help you get a job in the military, the um, Air wow. Force, right? Or like you can be a first responder or uh -huh. a fireman. So you have the secure job and now you can focus on your sport and get better. Wow. And guess what happened? The athletes got worse. They stopped dominating the world. And they were trying to figure out why. Like, we just gave you more money and gave you all this opportunity. Uh -huh. And here's what the Germans said happened. When you had an athlete and you gave him the safety net of a comfortable job, uh -huh. they didn't have to try to make a good athlete. I guess you that's right. Well, okay. And um, so a lot of these small countries, that's uh -huh. what they do, right? Like like Georgia. Uh -huh. they, uh, Georgia can't like fund weightlifting like USA does. We have weightlifting events, right? But they're like huge compared to like international things because we have so many weightlifters. Okay. So in those countries, the the you become an employee. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of, of the federation, of the government, right? Yeah, they, uh, they control you and say you're gonna go here, and that's just how small countries yeah. work. Uh -huh. Now in the U.S., on the other hand, and us being here is a perfect example because I have to buy my own barbells. Uh -huh. I'm using my own garage, I buy my own weights, uh -huh. and I have a job on the side, Okay. right? Uh -huh. So I'm not sponsored by anyone, and I'm still trying just as hard. Now, because weightlifting is not a job to me. Mm -hmm. Someone in Germany who gets sponsored, weightlifting becomes like their job. Yeah, as they, they have to get paid. Yeah. That. So when I'm doing it, it's a different, like, I am doing it because I truly love, love doing it. I'm spending my own money, I'm spending my own time, yeah. you know, time away from friends, family, I could be drinking at night, you know, uh -huh. but I'm, I decide to sacrifice and wait and think, so that's how you know I'm the true way. Okay. So when you're in this different country and you're getting sponsored, comes a question, like, is he really love weightlifting? Or he's just doing it for the or pay. Is he, yeah, or is he just for the pay or the security, or now he's in the system and he can't get out and yeah. get another job, right? I got you. So that's why American athletes are so good at the world level, right? Because... We are doing it because, because it's Because you want to love doing it, you want to do it. Yeah. Other than that, they're doing it. That's like the movie Rocky. Remember Rocky? Yeah. yeah. When, when that, the star, what's the guy's name? The Russian guy. Russian, Russian guy. guy. But he was owned by the state of, is it Germany or Russia? Russia. Russia. And he was paid to do this. And all he did every single day was box, 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 box. And drugs, 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 box, box, drugs. And when he lost to Rocky, when he beat Rocky, he was glorified. But when he lost to Rocky, it was him to pay. Yeah. It was because he was like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this was the same scenario, right? You know, the World Cup, something funny just happened. Uh, Saudi Arabia beat Argentina in the uh -huh. World Cup that's going on right now. Uh -huh. And every Saudi Arabian soccer player got a Rolls Royce at the car. What? Right? And then everyone was like, wow, wow, wow. And you know what I said? I was like, just wait till they lose the game you're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> they, they lose, they lose <laughs> the car. They, they lose, lose the car. car. We got a car to be last year, Paul. You know, more in the car, right? So you're right. It's a double-edged sword. You get funded, and it's all great, but then when you lose, it's like, oh man, they all got rolls rolls. They all got rolls rolls. It's all about. It's all the money you're talking about. Yeah, right? the Saudi. The Saudi. <laughs> is that is that that Dubai? Am I? The Saudi. Uh, well, they're all the Emiratis, right? They're uh, considered a tribe. So there's like this 
they all in Arabian Peninsula and they have like their small. Okay, like the states. Yeah, they're, they're okay. kingdoms, right? Oh, two, oh, like kingdoms. The, the Prince of Saudi Arabia, you have Qatar that's owned by another family, so they're, they're owned by different kingdoms. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, so everybody got their own little, they all got their own little stake in, yeah, in yeah. the country and they all got their name on the top of it. Yeah, it's mostly oil based. Oh, yeah. Because like Saudi Arabia is a desert. I don't even do farming, I don't even do manufacturing. There's so much money out there, it's ridiculous. No, it's, yeah. Everybody just... They're trying to get it, man. And, and no, no tax out there either. Uh-huh. No yeah. tax out there either. <laughs> they decide how you get it. If, if you own the land, you know, you decide yeah. how you get taxed. It's like a um, fuel system, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like the prince and the king of South. So he, he wants everybody to eat. So everybody eats, everybody good, everybody respectful, we'll keep it going. <laughs> Look, they're doing pretty darn good. You know, yeah, yeah. They, they've been keeping up. You know, some countries grow, some others don't. Uh -huh. But they, they've been growing as good as anyone else. Yeah. I don't think the people can't complain. You know? No, I don't want anybody complaining for it. They don't live in a living bed like there. They have to get a rules And you know, people leave and go over there, just live over there. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because they have ta different tax laws. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I remember that, yeah. Some of the people I follow financially, they, uh, they're always hanging out in the South. Yeah. Dubai, and they're talking about, hey, yeah, you do this with your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You put you over there with. Or that tax shelter, the tax shelter situation. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. You say, it's, tell me something you hear in America and you deal with what we got here. Yeah, <laughs> then, then we got something to talk about. Okay, but that, that's not that's not bad. So now I understand about the about the politics when it comes to Wait. Uh, lip lifting, weightlifting. So yeah. it, it gets more well, because here there's 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 a lot going on here as far as powerlifting movements, deadlifting and stuff and they're bench pressing and whatever. It is governed, but but it's not like Olympic weight. Yeah, it doesn't have the juicy drama behind it. No, it doesn't. It's, it's less. It's more like personal stuff. Yeah, yeah personal. It just becomes like boxing. You know, uh -huh. this guy against that guy. Um, okay. Like, but there's, there's no like government behind it. Oh, that. yeah, so the conspiracy behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who got doped up really good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, that's, yeah, that's, that's part of the the, 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 the... the Chinese do really well, too. Man, they... The, the statues of guys, they just... Their legs are freaking just... So, so China has this... Famous weightlifter, his name is Lu Jia Jun, uh, and he tried to retire, um, and they made him come back. <laughs> right? oh, no. Yeah, they made him come back, and this guy was like, um, he was he was snatching from the floor to overhead uh, um, twice his body weight, right? Which um, is uh, elite, world like historic, uh, historic. And so he he tried to retire and go go his own way, and they called him and said, apparently like, hey back, you know, because he, he's a popular figure. Uh, it's almost like he can't retire because people wanted it. And when he came back, he was so weak, right? He was weaker than me. He was weaker than everyone else. But he was showing his progress. And um, people were following him. They are making fun of him. Like, oh, look at me. I'm stronger than him now, right? They were like 10 days. And in eight weeks, this guy went from being barely able to lift his own body weight off the ground to doing like twice his body weight. So twice, by the way, got to be at least, what's about, about four or five hundred pounds? Yeah, four hundred, four hundred pounds, right? And he's coming back like no other. So you want to talk about like quality drug use and like quality um, state-sponsored strength training? Yeah. Program, you're not, it's not going to get better than the Chinese, right? But it has a downside. When you want to retire, they call you the hey, it's not yeah. time to retire. You know, so, so let's talk about drug use. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to let everybody understand here. There's drug use in most of all sports when it comes to being competitive because your body can only be pushed to a certain extent, no matter what they say. That's true. Period. Yeah. Drug-wise, now you can eat clean, there's a whistle. I mean... It's just a limit. There's a limit your body can go to. Your body needs extra to keep the party going. Now, how much you take is what is just it does up to you. And you can abuse it or you can do it within you know, reason and still work hard. And some people are blessed with genetics. Like, first, I'm built with good genetics, so I don't have to really do nothing. But I've took supplements before. I've took steroids before, and I know what it is. That's many, 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 back in 2003, I last, I did anything. So 20 years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, a long time ago. Yeah. But my body stayed the same, so if this is my right. foundation. You're keeping it. Yeah, it's fine. You're not, you're not melting away. No, because some people take supplements. I'm getting to my point, but some people take supplements when they haven't developed a body or technique or a structure, structure, structure to build off of to climb for a point. Because once you got the gear, you like this. You like boom, 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 boom. Everything kind of goes go, right back down. Yeah. Go back, it goes back to where you were. So say all of that. 
the gear doesn't make you a badass. It's the work ethic that you put into it. Like I said, I watch your videos, you do a lot of repetition, and it's like you can never get good. You always get to the point when you level off at zero, then you gotta exceed past that. So gear doesn't make you the best and greatest, no matter what country you you in how much gear you take, you still have to have a work ethic. What do you agree about? Yeah, and uh, and it's also dependent on the sport too. Okay. You know? Like, if you want to do bodybuilding, gear can help you. Yeah. If you do powerlifting, gear can help you. Now, you want to be the world best at ping pong, right? It's like <laughs> it's like is like, you can give me all the gear you want. It's uh -huh. not gonna make you better. Ping -pong, okay. Right. So it's it just depends on the sport. So ping pong right? is technique. Right. Okay. Yeah. So baseball, right, is also uh, technique, but they use the gear to do repetition. Okay. Right? To recover and do, do more reps. Yeah. And that's how people use gear in weightlifting too. Okay. It's not necessarily to get bigger and stronger. Um, you take the gear so you can get more reps, mm -hmm. so you can get better technique. Okay. Yeah. So it speeds it speeds up the recovery. Yeah. And the movement, but see, people use gear and bodybuilding to build tissue, to build muscle, and to help the muscle be able to recover fast and keep going. But after hour, it, it it does that. But when you take when you overdo it, it causes this, this you know ligament tendons. Yeah, they get but, soft. Yeah, and the muscles grow faster. And then also, I see you doing TRT. That's what I'm told. That you're doing it for maintenance, but you only gonna get back to what your levels are right. normal. But then you have to do something on top of that to get to the next level. And also too, at what cost? Right. Yeah. You look at that, and then, like I said, these other countries are forcing you to yeah, yeah, yeah. take your vitamin D, if you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, that's... And so, you know, um, you, you make a good point about how gear doesn't make you a better athlete. No, it doesn't. Because right? you can have two people giving them the same stuff, Yeah. and let's say they both improve, but one will become way better, and yeah. the other one will just become 5% better, and you ask yourself, like, did you really need gear to become five percent? Yeah. You know, hey, why you do that? Yeah, and in the human body, like people don't understand how much they're capable of because they never even try. It's all in the mind, right? Yeah. yeah. And for me, for example, I've I've been lifting hardcore since two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen. Okay. Uh, so that's um, that's seven years. Almost, that's a long time. Right? Yeah. And I have I have youngsters who um, who've been lifting for six months. Messaging me asking me for gear and like what kind of gear you take. Yeah. And I was like, six, bro. I was like, you're six months into it. Like you haven't, you haven't even, you Develop. haven't even got to the point where you can like make gains off your diet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like you haven't even done the sport. Nah. So you make a good point when you're like, they haven't even tried and they're nah. trying to give gear. It's just, it, it's just sad. You know? Yeah. And I give another example. Uh, when I started bodybuilding, I, I was natural. I didn't want to do gear for it. I'm just, I'm, I'm figuring things out. So I never did any drugs for like a long time. And the only time I started doing anything, that's when I was trying to go to like nationals. Novice, no drugs. You, you, your body just come along and still find yourself. Yeah. You know, you got open. You, what you need drugs for doing open? What you need drugs doing an open body for the show? You know, you know, that don't make any sense. Yeah. Now, if you get to like a national level, you have the opportunity to go to that pro card and do your own thing. You know, I, I can see step up a notch because, you know, you work with people that are not playing fair, and it, it's not wrong with it. It's just what it is. Yeah, that's just that's just. It, it's, it's just a sport. It's what it calls for. You gotta take supplements. You gotta take steroids, no matter what you think. Uh, now, if you're natural, you don't go so far in the sport, and you stop here. But when you start taking steroids, you try to jump into a whole different arena, like a freak monster. And I say to say that a lot of everybody, because you take steroids, doesn't make you gonna get. Doesn't make you jack. That's why people take drugs that look like. You know, bad they, 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 they yeah. yeah, and they, you, know, you know they bumped up and just oh why. You, why are you bigger than me? And guess what? I just say you did you know, to your example, but and that goes back to the weightlifting as well. Cause you do gear, like you said, doesn't make you a better athlete. It just makes you you just took drugs. You just took drugs. You still work your technique. Man, Eugene, look. When you say you just you just took drugs, yeah. Uh, some some of these youngsters come to me and they say, hey, um, I started taking the stack. Right. Uh -huh. I, 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 I don't know anything about the stack. Right. Okay. So just tell me this stuff. Um, and and I was like, okay, so how many days of the week are you lifting? So oh, I lift four times a week. And and it's like, like you're running a stack to lift four times a week, right? Yeah. Like if you're gonna 
if you want to do a stack, you should be lifting in the morning, yeah. in the afternoon, yeah. right? And squat in the morning, front squat in the afternoon. Yeah. Snatch in the morning, yeah. the morning, and that's when you make the stack work. Yeah. Right? It's like if you want to do like regular human things, yeah. like why even risking your health? Yeah. And doing all that stuff. Yeah. So that's also another thing that people don't understand is you if you want to run gear, especially in like sports performance yeah. kind of stuff. Like you gotta be at like the yeah, upper, yeah, you gotta take advantage of that. Yeah, right? take advantage of that. Yeah, like, so it's just crazy people taking the stack going to the gym four times a week. Like anyone can recover from that, you know? Just eat yeah. some rice, steak, and broccoli yeah. just to lift for like four times a week. That's, yeah. that's, that's ridiculous to me, you know? And then also, too, so what is your uh, what is your eating regimen like? Because I know if you snatch it, I think you snatch it like 350, 400 now. Like, last time I seen you, I think you were doing, last time I seen you doing like three something. Yeah, yeah, three, three yeah. and a half, three, three and a half plates, four, almost four plates. For the for the clean and jerk, I'm I'm pushing to get to four plates. Okay. And for snatch, I'm close to about three hundred. Okay. To get three plates. I, I, I thought you were there already. The last time I said you, I thought you were there already. Well, see, in weight, <laughs> in, in weightlifting, the equipment is different, right? So okay. when you're looking at the plates. Uh, first of all, they're in kilograms. You don't know how heavy they are, and you got to drop them. So it looks thicker, it's like a 25 or uh-huh. like a 45. Okay. But it just looks heavier. Oh, okay, okay, because it because the the type of mechanics and the body what what's put into the movement. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, and the, the it's bumper plates, right? Yeah. So you have, they have to drop them, so they can't be like these thin metal 45s. Uh, right? Because like with the thin metal 45s, you know exactly what this guy's lifting. Uh, okay. Okay. 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. 45. Okay. So in, in this sport, all the plates are the same diameter. Uh huh. Oh, they just they have to hit the ground at the same time. Right? Okay. So you never know, like is it the is he lifting 350 or 300? Right? Okay. Or is it like 270? Okay. So, okay. Okay. Because I know, I know. So how is your diet looking with this? How? It, how well, okay. Tell you what. Walk us through. Your diet on a regular basis, with good or bad, what you know, how how are you eating on a regular basis to kind of withstand to do these so movements? Did you did you know um, I'm a running me I'm the kebab king. I uh-huh. you know that's like my my thing. Okay, I, I, I love kebabs. Yeah, kebab, yeah. Uh-huh. that's like um, I run a meat page and it's called kebab and kilo. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And kebab is like a joke. Like it could be like steroids. You know? uh-huh. like, yeah, have, you, have you had your kebab? Uh-huh. Today, uh-huh. Right. Or it could be like a sexual innuendo. Uh-huh. Right? Like all these girls want my kebab now that I got the liver. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so it's like it opens it uh, up to be a lot of jokes. Uh-huh. But, um, kebab king. I personally have um, very um, close Persian diet. Okay. Right? And when I say Persian diet. Um, it's mostly rice, right? It's white rice, and um, there's like a vegetable stew on the side, uh-huh. and the meat that I eat is, um, you know, I eat kebab quite often, right? Really? So it consists of, you know, chicken. Um, I eat a lot of lamb, more than most Americans probably do, right? But uh, is lamb high in fat, or is less in fat? Yeah, it's it's high in fat. Okay. But that's. Um, but that's what you need to make kebab because okay. the meat has to stick on the metal skewer. So if it's lean, um, it just falls right off. So it has to be nice and oh. fat. So you put lamb meat on it. Right? You know, I see the video you did. A, you did a yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you in the backyard. Yeah, it was, it was right oh, on. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my brother was doing. It. Oh, your brother. Okay. And, and here, here's the thing with kebab is um, when it, the the fat melts off. Okay. Right? So you're not really eating the fat. You're using mm-hmm. the fat as a flavor uh-huh. and as like a medium to like hold the meat together. Uh-huh. And when you're rotating it, the the uh, fat falls off. So the fat you're talking about is gone. Yeah, it's it's a lot leaner than when it starts off. Okay, I got you. I got you. And uh, so back back to the diet thing. Um, it depends on what stage I am in okay. uh, lifting. Uh-huh. If we're doing a high volume, because in in bodybuilding you just usually people try to get bigger. Right, they okay. either bulking or cutting. Right, mm-hmm. they're bulking to add on muscle, or they're cutting to just get leaner. In weightlifting, um, your I, your body, you know, like your height and uh-huh. like, uh, arm lengths, they lend themselves to an ideal weight class. Okay. Right, and so you always want to be in that weight class um, because that's the ideal for you. Now um, you have to get stronger without getting too heavy, right? And uh, you have to be able to cut without reducing your performance. So, it, but it affects your strength, does it? It does, but that's what I'm saying. So you, you have you have like a, your margin is very small, because um, if if you cut too much weight, your performance drops, and we weigh in two hours before the meet. Uh, so you can, you mean you gotta be on your diet then. You have to be on your diet, and that's why I said it it depends on the volume, right? Okay. So my uh, and I'm not very strict with my diet really, um, but it, it it happens naturally. So as the volume goes up. 
you have to eat more to, okay. to keep up with it, to keep from losing weight, right? So, so, so do you use, do you use the carbs, the rice as yeah. your energy, yeah. or do you minimize your carbs and then increase your, your protein, which is your kebabs? Yeah, so um, I, uh, before my training, mm -hmm. I try to, so the, the first thing I do in the morning is I try to eat um, uh, high fat, high protein. Okay, high fat. So I, I wake up and I try to eat some eggs and sausage. Okay. Right? Um, eggs and bacon. What kind of sausage? Like regular sausage or just uh, so, turkey sausage, whatever, chicken tur sausage? Turkey, turkey, chicken, okay. you know, like a poultry okay. um, with, with the eggs. So I get my cholesterol and I get my protein in. So my body has time to digest the protein throughout the day. Okay. And before I start lifting, I need carbs. And um, so, you know, you, you can go, you can be like mentally fatigued or... Um, you're cutting weight because okay. you, know, you know you get that brain fog when you're cutting, uh -huh. and you can still go through the motions in bodybuilding. Now in weightlifting, when you're trying to hit a snatch, like you need to be there, okay. right? And if you're trying to cut weight and your brain has the la lack of carbs and has the fog, your technique is not going to work. You're not going to be able to respond. Okay. And a lot of times you just get dizzy getting up. So you might have muscle yeah. that fire. So, so you have to have carbs before you lift. Okay. So I get my protein and fats in the morning, a big big dose. And I have my carbs throughout the day, uh, right before I start lifting. Uh, and as soon as I'm done lifting, I hit the kebab games. Okay. Yeah. So the ke kebabs are your recovery. Your recovery. Everything, all the engines going forward. Yeah. We, we getting everything in. We get our protein. We get our fats in. Yeah. And yeah. that's the that's our idea. Wow. So how much? How many carbs do you do? Carbs. What? Three hundred. What? Thirty grams. Forty grams. hundred grams. Three hundred grams per day. A four. You know, four. Cause it's, so, that's the question. Yeah, I, Did you digest your carb properly? Because well, you, know, you don't pick up weight. You, you stay pretty lean. Yeah, I so you eat this right. Yeah, because so you got to add your abs that actually. Yeah, I, visible. I, I have abs 24-7 yeah. all year long. And you eat a lot of carbs? I wouldn't say a lot. I just timed it. Okay. Oh, okay. So you timed it to where you... Time. Yeah. So the carbs you take in, it, needs, it has a job to do. Right. And the protein that you take in, the body take in, has okay. this job to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I, so, wow. so the timing is... Uh, the timing is the more important. Well, that's good then, because most people, that, that's, that's kind of difficult to, to time out, doesn't it? <clears throat> kind of structure. Well, you do it for so long, it's yeah, for me, second nature. For me, it's yeah, second nature. But this funny, yo, that's all right, that's that was difficult for me. And yeah, it, it, took, it took a while to get there. Uh -huh. um, but I will say, if you work from home, right, or uh -huh. you're self employed, it's a lot easier to do, you know? Because, like, let's say you got, you're a guy that has a job in a machine shop. Uh -huh. and I can't do that. Their lunch break is at, you know, the machines have to run, lunch break is at noon, uh -huh. right? And then, like, where are you going to, you're going to leave and go get, you know, it's hard to do, right? I guess, okay. Or you got to, like, meal prep for yourself. Uh -huh. I guess you could do that, but it, it, since I work from home, it's, it's easy. Okay, I got you. Okay, so that's why you're, you're in a unique, unique situation that you can, you, 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 you pace yourself what, what direction you want to go. Yeah, yeah. And t timing. I would say is the most important aspect of my diet. Right? Oh. Because it's all performance based. So you take in maybe 50% carbs, 60%? Yeah, I, I, most of my carbs, 60 to 70% of the carbs I eat before I start lifting. Not right like before. But and that's, and that's like rice? Yeah, it's mostly rice, um, tortillas. Oh, right? really? I, I'm, I'm allergic to wheat. Okay. Uh, like, not that I'm like deathly allergic, but I can't like wake up, eat pancakes, right? Uh, and then for lunch, have like a pizza, okay. and then for dinner, have pasta. What about, what about Mediterranean? Uh, those pita breads, you eat those too? Yeah, yeah. So, so those, those, those are your carbs yeah. type of deal? Yeah, when I, when I eat, I, I use the pita breads. What about, and, and then your fats are from the meat or from like like avocados or, or you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the fats. So I, I prefer to um, eat... Um, Avocado oil and olive oil okay. as my fats. So rice, believe it or not, rice can help you get a lot of fat because you can pour the fat, like you know, yeah. pour the fat in uh, rice uh -huh. and it absorbs it, you know, and it tastes good. So I usually melt butter, put it on the rice, um, avocado oil, olive oil. Those oh, are those really? Are my to get. Okay, you know what? I, I I've done. I put a bone marrow in my uh yeah, my fat. Just put some put some broth. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I I actually cook the bone. The, 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 the where I love it, and what I do is, I I put my eyes in the refrigerator, and what I do is I put I mix in a lot of a lot of like a lot of garlic. I love garlic. <laughs> I eat garlic until like I'm a vampire. I mix <laughs> garlic and my berry together, and what I do, if I'm cooking like rice over there, it looks I I cut a piece of it out and I mix it in with my rice. And so as the rice heats up, 
it's the right, it's it's they stay with my rice. Right. So I'm eating. That's good. You, you know, that's like a Mediterranean uh, Middle Eastern style. Really? I didn't know that. Because we have we um a lot of times we boil our meat. Uh huh. Right, and then you just take like a lamb shank. That's like one of the dishes, right? Uh -huh. and you have like the shank, and you put it in there, and the, you eat the the bone marrow too. Right? Yeah. So or organ meats and like bone marrow stuff. That's like really healthy. Yeah, it is. It, I try to keep, and you know, we live in an industrialized uh -huh. uh, food system. That's what we have. So the organ meats and the bone that stuff gets like ground out and becomes dog food. Yeah. Right, or they put it somewhere else. We don't really get that. We just get this nice steak, but it doesn't. It doesn't have all the nutrients. Uh, right? So I, I, I try. I try to do that as well. And you know, if um, in like the Persian culture and the Persian diet, um, it's a lot easier to eat those things because that's like part of it, right? Oh, like a standard American diet, you have to like get out of your way to get some bone broth. Like yeah. You have to get out of your way to get some bone marrow, eat yeah. some kidney or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, because I go buy mine from the store, and one time I bought like 11 bags of bone marrow. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like 11 bags of this, and I put it in my freezer, so I pull a, I pull a bag out, put it in the oven, cook it, and then I was boiling my bones too. I would boil it and make a big old giant pot of marrow, I put onions and garlic, cook it up real good, and I let it cool, and then I take the, like the level, the fat level off right, of right, it, right. I remove that, and I save it for cooking, but then the, the broth itself, I pour it in like a container and I'll just just sip on it. Just sip. Yeah. I drink on it like at night time. That, that's like that's like a perfect food for after you get done cutting. Cutting. Oh, cutting yeah. exercise. Yeah. Really? Well, because in in weightlifting, um, you weigh in two hours before your competition. Uh -huh. So you can't really. You can try to cut fat, but like on the day you're cutting water, right? Oh. So you want to be able to get nutrients in, right? Yeah. But you can't have like a juicy steak because you okay. have to start lifting, right? Okay. Um, and you can't just drink water. No, right? it's just that diluted. You dilute, yeah. So bone broth, right? Wow, it's like I didn't perfect, think about that. It's perfect. It's got, it's got, put some salt in it. Yeah. It's got some flavor. Yeah. Right. And guess what? It's got the protein yep. that you need. You right. Think about that. So bone broth is a perfect recovery tool for um after cutting weight for performance. Wow. Okay. So if I can give a, a, a tip to like weightlifters and powerlifters. Okay. Uh, anyone who wants to perform right after the cut is bone broth. Right. Yeah, some oh, kind yeah. of foe or some kind yeah. of bone broth stew. Yeah, bone broth, yeah. Because they, they sell uh, the packs and whatnot. Yeah, they, they sell, I like, I like it. They, they sell that collagen. Collagen is good, I like collagen. But just take it real, like somebody that had a child, <laughs> that fell over and died, you know, one of those things. Yeah. That, that's real broth, broth. Because they got fish, but I, I, they got chicken and other options as well. But I like I like the bone because it looks, you know, instead of searing the bone, you bake it for like 15 minutes. I put like a little oil on top, I season my stuff, boom, I cook it by 15, 20 minutes. Sounds delicious. Oh man, I, I just get out, boom. Uh -huh. it, it's, it looks yucky, but it has it has purposes for your body and help for recovery. Yeah. It has a lot of stuff, hard, cholesterol, the whole nine. Well, you know, Liver King, yeah. uh, you know how he um, got exposed for uh, running like a serious stack of steroids? Oh, what happened? Man, so, you know, Liver King is, um, He's, he's selling the product, he's selling the supplements. Uh -huh. And uh, people have always asked him, like, are you natural? He tries to avoid it, right? But he's claimed that he was natural, right? And I mean, his skin is red. You know, he's running a serious stack. Yeah. And guess what? His email got leaked. Uh, he was consulting with someone else about, hey, I'm, I'm running this gear. Can you advise me how much more to take, less to take, optimize it for me? And that email got leaked. So now everyone is like dogging on him. Yeah, well, right? I know he was. Well, see, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on this, right? Because a part of me says the Liver King has done more for public health uh -huh. than, like, public health issues, yeah. right? He's got the people off the couch, right? He yeah. got them thinking, like, hey, I need to consume organ meat, yeah. right? Got them to be healthier. Now he, and then maybe people thought they were going to look like him, no. right? There's no way. No, right? There's no way. You're going to look like the best version of yourself, but yeah. you're not going to look like him. So I'm kind of torn about it, and oh, see someone experienced like me and you who are like in the industry. Like we see someone like him, like we know exactly. Yeah, exactly. we know. But, but but I'm gonna tell you something. Americans, I'm gonna tell you, black folks, colored folks, we ate organ meat all the time, liver, kidneys, all this stuff that bone that that liver keep talking about. We were eating this stuff back then. Right. We ate. I ate when I was younger, but now society is different. They don't eat that kind of stuff. They eat. So expensive food right, yeah. or high society food type of deal and that's got about which is empty 
Yeah, empty, yeah, empty, empty calories, empty, empty calories, whatever you call it. But with him, yeah, he did make a difference. He did, he did present an ideal, a way of consuming protein or consuming what's called an orthodox type of food that people not normally eat yeah. on a regular basis. So he, yeah, I don't think he does anything wrong. I think people should mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mind your own business. Let me, let me. If he does, he does. If you tell you no, let me do the business. And that's my opinion. If, you, if I ask you about new gear, this is what I'm going to tell you. No. no. That means what that means. That means it's on your business. It's on your business. <laughs> yeah, it's called get you some, get you some business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and get out of my ass. That's all it means. And, and you need to apologize. He, right. he, what are you apologizing for? Well, for apologizing for potentially misleading you. Man, I don't care, man. Uh, hey, we mislead every single day. You get up. You go to work. Yeah, you get up. You get up to work. You misled. You go to work. You stop at that red light. Yeah. You're misleading. Like, yeah. I have a law of misleading. Yeah. Like, it's a real system, right? Yeah. When you, you go to get a job, you get misled because guess what? They actually do more than you, you uh, sign up for. Man, you're not lying about that. Uh, they didn't they, they threaten to fire you. Can't, oh, well, you, 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 oh, you don't feel like doing it, huh? Well, you know what? We, we didn't hire two more people to help you with your job. What yeah. you do about that? Just that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah so. Everything in this league, who cares? Yes, and, and like I said, I, I, I honestly don't care. You know, man, I, everybody is going to tell that, man. But the, but the thing is, I, I don't speak to make money. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of people who like run their mouth on the internet to make money, yeah. right? So they're not going to let an opportunity to kick someone down, right, and get some more views. You know why, don't you? Hmm. Those people that got low self esteem, they have no value within themselves, no, no humility. Yeah. I, I, Am I right or wrong? No, you're 100% right. I can, I can definitely Yeah, see. they have no right, no humility. Anybody that goes out there, anything, it's like a boxer. Most boxers have respect for each other. If I hit you one good time, and we're boxing the whole time, I get you one time, you're about to struggle, you know I'm done. You, you know I'm done. Why do you run after me and beat the hell out of me? And the poor, what, what, what's that going to start off? Well, you know, because they can get smacked in the mouth the opposite way. Yeah, right? like yeah, that's true. If your if your counterpart got you good, yeah, right, would you want him to like knock you out and you good for six months? No, you know, that's not good. That's that's terrible. And, and you're right. There's um sometimes people do run their mouth because they're they're not scared of like um, the consequences. You know, it's almost it's almost like they can do it and get away with it. So they just yap on it. You know what happens at the end? It's always as I that's another little word called karma. <laughs> Karma's gonna come back around. Oh yeah, Karma's yeah, gonna get you. Karma's gonna get you. Yeah. People don't understand this repercussions of everything we got going on, no matter what it is. It, it's, it's what it is. That's just how the world works. Yeah, yeah, trust me, I understand, but people don't care. So at uh, any, uh, any means is necessary. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, either there or there. But, uh, but yeah, but, uh, it, it, it's what it is. Liver King, you anything wrong. It's, 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 it's what it is. Yeah. It, and you know, um, I, so you know I used to play team sports. Okay. Right. You played football, didn't you? Um, what was that? You played? What, what I played uh, college soccer and did rugby. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was a rugby. Okay, I got it was, yeah. And and uh, lately, I've, uh, I did like track and field. Uh -huh. Which is like an individual sport. I mean, you're still on the track team, but it's an individual sport. Uh -huh. And now I do exclusively weightlifting. Um, and uh, when you when you talked about, you know, self-esteem, uh -huh. uh, I, I do think that individual sports and my like team sports, um, they have elements that are different from each other, but I do think um, individual sports can bring more more the masculine discipline out of young men. Okay, individual sports, okay. So not it's like you being the only person. Yeah, not that, they, not that they're the only, not that saying that team sports can't discipline you and uh, bring your masculine discipline out. Uh, but individual sports can just do it a little bit better from, from my perspective. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we men, right? Like that's why the living king was yeah. famous. Because he's he's talking he's talking about the instinct that's deep within within yeah. us, right? Like me and you two thousand years ago, we would be like hunting for food. Yeah. We would be killing animals, right? Uh, and we would be hunted also. Oh, yeah. while, while me and you are butt naked out in the woods trying uh, to get this deer, there's a bear. And uh, why not trying to get it? Ooh, it's still good yeah. right here. So, you, as, a, as a human, you are the hunter and you are the hunter. Yeah, hunter Right? You're the hunter or hunter did? Both. Okay. Both. You're the hunter and you're the hunter. Okay. And uh, now, see, that, like the, um, the archetype, the typical story of the young man okay. right, that, that exists in history 
And here's how it usually, like Buddha had it, right? The Europeans used the white knight that killed the dragon. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens is you, you're a young man and you have nothing to you but potential. And guess yeah. what? No, no one cares, okay. right? And you're struggling and you have like emotional trauma from the past and you just can't seem to find success in life. And here's what you do. You leave the castle. You, you leave your father's home. Uh -huh. That's why when you... One of the insults that you give to young men is like, you live in your mom's basement, right? And you give them that insult, uh, not because in your mom's basement there's inherently anything wrong with it, uh, but because you're saying you haven't decided to leave the safety of the castle. Okay. Right? And what you do is you leave the safety of the castle, and guess what? You do the hardest thing possible. You kill the dragon, okay. right? The dragon that that has everyone scared. Everyone in the castle is scared of the dragon, and you kill it. And then, and guess what the dragon does? He holds gold. The dragon is holding gold, it holds gold. Uh -huh. So, which tells you, the most reward in life that you can get is always shadowed by the biggest danger that exists. Oh, yeah, I guess, right? okay. okay. So okay. more risk, more reward. More risk, more right? reward, yeah. yeah. So they, they say, mess around and find out, right? Oh, yeah, mess around and find out. Yeah. But it, it goes to lifting, too. So the harder you work yeah. and push through your deal, you persevere with good dieting, you kind of... Yeah, it's, it's the hardest thing, right? Yeah. And and you kill the dragon, now you are you throw the gold on your horse, uh -huh. and then you come back home. Okay. You come back to the castle, and guess what? Now you're the hero. Now you're the hero. Right? And you were trying to get laid. Uh huh. Guess what? You get the princess now. Oh yeah, oh, you could have done that. You got family here. Yeah, you, know? you get the princess now, and that's like the story of the man. Okay. That's the story of manhood. Uh -huh. So, weightlifting um, and strength sports in general, um, we men, we there, there is no blue dragon. Okay. Right? There is no war to be fought. We live in the U.S. It's 2022. Yeah. Right? We work from home. So what are we gonna do with our masculinity? Yeah. And if you go, if you go to like schools, they don't want the kids to compete. Oh no, I still don't. Yeah. want everyone to be soft. Yeah. And and you know you know what boys do? We like we like to play fight. We like to throw and yeah. shoot. Uh -huh. Right. We play with guns uh -huh. and all those things because they are harmful. Uh -huh. at, at the extreme end, they are harmful. But we're trying to suppress Press. the masculine yeah. urge, right? Make it weak. <laughs> and Make your girl. That's why a lot of men out here there. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's it, it becomes and you know that's that's a huge challenge. Yeah. And um, I, I don't want to use the word. Oppression, because I truly believe you can't oppress masculinity. Masculinity is the strongest, most resilient force on the planet. I think you can. It will. It will. You can try to. It will leak out. And, and guess what? And, but well, why does men walk around acting like little girls all the time? It's all the prima donnas. Yeah. I'm jumping to a different subjects, so yeah, it, it, it prima donnas. I'm pressing on these girls. Oh, I hurt my. Oh, I hurt my yeah. guy. He hurt so but, bad. But, but that's temporary. That's temporary. Right? You do, you're doing these to these men, right? And you can, for a short amount of time, for many years, uh -huh. one or two generations, you can do that. But the blowback you get is going to be. And look, that's why the Liberty King is so famous, right? Well, the Liberty King is famous because he found an angle that people are now exploiting. And, and he went out there like, hey. Who's the first one? Yeah, I think, I think he made me because I never heard about it. Like, what the hell is dude doing? Yeah, that's wrong with him. But yeah, he, he come hard with it. He has to make it that motivated. Yeah, and you know, his message is like masculine. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, man, yeah, man, I man. I just shower, right? I eat warm. He's like, what's what's more primal? Yeah, yeah primal. And killing the animal. Yeah. Ripping his lip out and eating that warm here. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the most that. delicious yeah. meal you ever had yeah. in your life. Because you, you, know? you didn't, you were sacrificed to get that meal. You have it. Ah, yeah. You enjoy this, what it is. But maybe not being like that, maybe like that. But so, so you're, you're right. There are some but, 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 but we we don't want to be people know us. Yeah, but we don't want to be right. Yeah. Like they they don't want to be that way. We don't want them to be that way. And I think the gym and weightlifting and sports is one way for men to still be masculine and fit in within society. Like, I'm right? your favorite way. Yeah. Because, look, what's the alternative? Me and you are going to have like a boxing match in the front yard. Yeah. And, like, I'm going to come shoot you and we're going to ride each other. <laughs> like, we're going to play games. That's, that's the alternative, man. Yeah, right? yeah. That's the goal. Just after all, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we have nothing to do. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. So, we have to. And society doesn't do a good job of giving men that outlet. Yeah. So, we find it ourselves, right? It's different day and time. That would think, like you said, people are sanitary now. 
nobody's actually back then. I was younger. Labor, you got just shops, so factories open. Your labor, they're picking up things. They're doing form work now. Like I said, you work from home. Yeah, I, it's yeah, different. yeah, it's different. I mean, your, your your body's not meant to do what it's constantly doing right now. It's like it just fell into place. A lot of men are just doing. I don't know what they're doing. It's just, it's just modern life. Yeah, modern and, life. And, and, and it's too easy. And, and it comes because of money. Yeah. Right? Like, if you have a high paying job, I wouldn't mind working at night and sleeping during the day. Yeah. Okay? If you have a high paying job, I wouldn't mind, like, having a little bit worse diet, right? But take a short lunch break and eat some fast food and make more money. But the question comes as, like, at what point? Are you like sacrificing more yeah. of your yeah. human being? Yeah. And not just health, like your human being uh, for the money, right? And because money makes the world go round, there's a lot of pressure for us to like give up who we are for money. But the, but the doing is they're making money more valuable than their personal health. And, and money is just a piece of paper. Like you said, if I've heard a dollar bill is whatever value you put on top of it. Yeah, that's what it is. So basically, I'm exchanging this dollar bill because I feel like this dollar bill, this fifty dollar bill, this ten million dollar bill, this million dollar deal is more, worth more than my God given soul, spirit, body, yeah. and and the, and and it's worth more than my family's. That's that's a terrible one too. Sacrificing other yeah. people. Yeah. You, you know, um, For pre- money. President Eisenhower during World War Two, uh, um, the the budget was short, and they were asking the president to cut budgets, and he wouldn't cut the budgets for arts and humanities. Right? Okay. And they say, hey, we're in the middle of war. Why don't you cut the budget for the unimportant stuff? Yeah. You know what his answer was? What's that? He said, why do you think we're in that war to begin with? Because we're trying to protect that stuff. I guess. Okay. That and what's, the, what's the point of fighting the war? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the question, what's the point of the, the job? Right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if your whole life is just to make money, you're just like a robot. Yeah. Because you make, I heard, I heard, what's the who said this? Uh, what's the a comedian? Uh, Mike Kip said this. You make money. You stack money to save it to give it to somebody else. So what are you gonna do with it? If you die tomorrow, yeah, you got five point two million dollars in bank, but you dead. Right. Everybody, they gonna, it's like vultures. They gonna eat off your carcass until it's all gone. Cool. So you make money to spend money. When you hold your money, it, it, it cannot recycle itself. You gotta, you gotta work the money. You gotta yeah. use the money. Yeah, right? use the money. That's what it's for. Not saving, tightening. You have to circulate the money so it keep coming back. The harder, harder you keep it, things will keep happening for that money to like, you need to release it. You need to release it. I mean, you need to release it. When you talk, so you hold the money so tight, just what happens, you, your blessings are set back. And that's where you're sacrificing yourself for the love of a piece of paper that has a value that we give it per the number. But guess what? We all want to stay indoors. We all got to do this. But there's other ways to keep. Right. Yep. It's a system going. hundred percent right. And and you know, for me, and I think the trend is for like most other men, uh-huh. um, because we have to work, we have to make yeah. money. I mean, yeah. The gym and weightlifting is an outlet to still be masculine okay. and be who we are, right? Okay. Without sacrificing too much. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I got you free with everything else. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Well, but other than that guys, uh we had a good conversation. I, I like the way we went. We checked, switched over and what we talked about, the uh, humanity and yeah. liberty. Yeah, yeah. liberty. Yeah. I, I think people need to leave liberty King alone. I think they mind your own business. If you ain't on it, you just mad because you ain't on the stack he was on. <laughs> you wish you was on the stack that he was on. And you, looked the way you, look, you wish you looked the way you looked. A lot of people get that man a freaking hard time. You know, they, they probably wouldn't even look as good as him. No, he wouldn't. That's, he, he chiseled, man. That, that dude's stomach is like, he got abs on top of abs. Turtle show. Yeah, turn, yeah, not turn up shit up. So I, I think the man's good marketing. I think the man's taking care of the business. So I don't knock another person's hustle. And that's what it is. I don't. It, it's too much. It's it's, it's called envious. Being envious of somebody's situation. Just hating. Mind your business. And get, get you some. That's what I feel. So I leave. Oh yeah. You, you see, you got, uh, I think uh, we got a show coming up. Yeah, December seventeenth. I'm competing. For okay. The first time in a long in a while. How, what last thing you competed? Um. In the summer. The summer? Last night you competed last summer? Yeah. Okay, well, what, what you shooting for? You shoot. So I'm, I'm just trying to come back. You know, I've, I've had, some, yeah, I had some setbacks, uh, so I just want to get on the stage okay. and get back into the competing mindset. Okay. So early 2023, we're trying to do some solid work. 
Okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm excited about because I know last time I seen him, he was going through some stuff, so he's kind of making some progress moving forward. That's like from when I watched the videos, you were making a lot of good, solid gains True. in your technique, and I know your coach been working tirelessly hard together to kind of bring everything in together and get you all ready to go. This close to some big breakthroughs. Okay, okay. Hey guys, I, I met him here first, so I get the first autograph when he get his uh, when he get the trophy. Any hey, money involved? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I saw one with check. Yeah, I won a thousand dollars. Yeah, unless a guy. So, guys, hey, well, stay tuned for more uh, performance and wellness with Ali. So, boom, 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 Bye, guys. boom. Okay, guys. Bye.